Hi, Dave Scotland for premiumbeat.com and welcome to another quick tip. Uh, we're going to take a look at a, a process where we're going to extrapolate some camera, some natural camera shake from real life footage. Now, traditionally, to get some movement or some, some camera handheld movement into a 3D camera in After Effects, traditionally people will turn to the wiggle expression. And unfortunately, the wiggle expression does have some inherent problems with it. Now, I'm just going to, uh, to kick this off so we can uh, have a look at it. The top one is driven by the wiggle expression. Now, even though it's random in its nature, it actually has a pattern to it. Given that the wiggle expression has parameters built into it, and it will only ever wiggle within those parameters, whereas the bottom... Uh, shot there is sh is natural movement taken from a handheld camera and it just has more more of an organic feel to it the top one is just a little bit robotic and a little bit too uh, processed and uh, what we're going to do is take you through the process of tracking um, a natural camera and bringing that into a comp such as this and you'll start to see some of the power that you can have uh, out of out of using that process. So, that, uh, just before I close this, another problem with the wiggle expression is that if you apply a wiggle to a 3D camera, it'll apply to all three axes, and a natural handheld camera won't be wiggling or moving in and out towards the subject. It will actually only move in the X and Y. You can, of course, move as the camera operator you can move in closer to a subject and move out but it won't wiggle back and forward on that Z axis so that's an inherent problem with using the wiggle that the bottom method uh, doesn't incorporate which I think also adds to the natural feel of the movement so let's go ahead and set this up I've got this footage that I basically shot straight out in the garden uh, I spent no time. I really wanted to show you how raw and unedited the footage can be and the subject matter can be for you to get some good camera motion. Now, I'll just sort of uh, play this through. I've got two objects and they're on the same Z plane as one another. And uh, they, they share the same Z distance from the camera operator. Even though I'm tracking from from uh, right to left, or moving from right to left, um, those two objects still share the same sort of Z space, and it's going to work nicely for us. And by having two objects, we're going to get, we're going to be able to extrapolate the rotation of the shot as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to close this. I'm going to drag that footage down onto my new comp button. And the beauty of using that method is it's going to set everything according to the footage. The length and the resolution is going to be perfect. So we can grab our footage and we can go to our tracker controls. Now, if they're not in your interface, you can get them from window and then tracker and make sure it's ticked and it'll be somewhere in your interface. So here's mine here. And now with that selected, I can track motion. And it pops up a second window here. We're, we're inside the footage window for that layer now. And you'll see that there's a track marker in the center here. And what we want to do is add a second marker for rotation. And now we have two markers in the scene. So you can grab the center of the marker and drag it over to our first point. Now I found that I got a better track on this side just from using this V down in the, in the seat and so I'm just going to widen that out a little bit, maybe maybe bump that up a little bit. Something like that is fine. And uh, the second track marker that we have here, I'm going to drag it down and just put it at the base of the track marker where it meets the seat. Maybe widen it out a little bit. Something like that should be fine. And once you've got your track markers in position, just hit the play button to track through. Um, it's going to track very quickly. I might track backwards there. I wasn't right at the uh, very first key uh, frame position. And once you've done, basically you have tracked a motion. You need to apply it to something. So we're going to go layer, new, null object. And we're just going to rename the null 
to cam shake and then over in our motion tracking we're going to edit target and select that layer cam shake which is the null we've just created and apply to the X and Y out of the list and go OK. So now we have, if we close this window, back in our comp for that footage, you can see our red null object now is tracked to that track one position. And that's all we need to do. So we now have that cam shake track uh, null object there. We can grab our test composition uh, in this instance it's this BMX sort of graphic and I'm just going to double click on it and that's it from a custom view and I'll just rotate it around a little bit so I've got some layers and they're distributed out in 3D space and you'll see that our logo layer is out in front here and then further back in space we have various other layers with our background right at the back and I'll just go back to uh, active camera just to to uh, center it up and the first thing we need to do is create a new camera and I'm just going to go for a 35 millimeter standard there and very important that you do this layer transform and this is with the camera we want to go into auto orient and it'll pop up this little window what we want to do is switch off auto orient we don't want a point of interest for the camera and by switching auto orient off it gets rid of that point of interest uh, and so now we have pretty much like a free camera a non-targeted camera so we can go back over into our track um, footage control C on the camera shake null come back to our co uh, composition and control V and that brings our camera shake null in and you can see that it's sort of shaking around there and uh, that's going to work nicely as is and we'll need to turn it into a 3D layer. Now if I hit P for position you'll see that there's no movement on the Z axis anyway. Um, I can actually shift R so that you can see we have position and rotation data on that null object. Well, The first thing we need to do is grab our camera and parent it to the cam shake and you'll see now that our camera is shaking around and it's, it's working nicely, but I like to give a little bit more control. Every time I use this method, I like to have some extra control just to make sure that the shot is reading and just for added direction to the shot. And to do that, I'm just going to go Layer, New, Null Object. And just hit Enter. We're going to rename this to Cam Control. And what we're going to do is parent the cam shake to that cam control just make sure it's a 3d layer as well now we can bring up p for position for that layer uh, that null object and shift r will bring up our rotation now what i can do now i'm just giving myself a little bit of space so we can see what we're doing here slide down a little bit what i can do is really give some extra control to the shot and the, I'm going to create a keyframe for position and I'm going to create a keyframe for Y rotation and I'm also going to just rotate the Z position around a little bit just to just to steady that up. Let's go into that camera. It's moving around nicely. Um, we're going to reposition the shot. I'm going to come in in Z space a little bit and that's going to work nicely there and I'm also going to maybe rotate the shot over to the left a little bit and then I'm going to come to my end position I'm going to rotate back over the other side and just use my positioning to make sure that the shot stays where I want it probably come back a little bit on that rotation something like that is fine and just scrub through to make sure that's working okay I think that's working fine and what we can do now that we've got our camera motion sorted is just make sure our background layer we're just going to scale it up and make sure it stays within the shot throughout the shot the other layers are fine they don't have any hard edges and that's going to work nicely so the, an extra step you could switch on motion blur here and grab all, all of your layers and make sure motion blur is switched on there we'll just do a RAM preview so that's the process and you'll see the uh, end product shortly. 
what you can do then is use the Camshake um, comp and save it out as a comp of its own and save it into a directory with a bunch of other Camshake uh, so you can have erratic, smooth, tracking, zoom in. Um, you can do a whole bunch of things with that Camshake data and put it into your um, into your directory structure so that you can call on it later. And this can be applied to uh, logo graphics like this or can be applied to footage, can be applied to the 2D, 3D pan, pan and scan effect. Uh, there's a bunch of things that you can do with it. But as you'll see, it is a very natural motion to it and uh, and it's definitely something that you should try with your motion graphics or your editing or your effects so i hope you got something out of that quick tip until next time for premiumbeat.com bye for now